Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to Chatfield Lutheran Church. Uh, special welcome to the visitors who are here today. And I know uh, the Rudar family has many uh, relatives here today. So God bless you all. We have a baptism just a little bit later in the service when Vienna is uh, uh, celebrating with us the fact that she is a child of God. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter. Also, it's a special day, of course, because it's Mother's Day. So to all you mothers out there, uh, may God bless your day today. The Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so may us, our gathering today, be a blessing to you. We continue now with our confession and forgiveness that, that's printed in your bulletin or on the screen. I invite you to stand. <clears throat> We worship as we live our lives in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another in this time of silence. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn, God is Here. We will be singing the first three verses.
You may be seated. We continue now with the service of baptism. The word that you'll, words that you'll need will be on the screen. Otherwise, in the front of the red hymnal, it's on page 227. <clears throat> in baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in communion of the saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So Frank and Tiffany, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Vienna Rose Rudar baptized into Christ? Thank you. And as parents, you bring this child... Vienna to receive this gift of baptism and you are entrusted with some responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, to nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. And so, Frank and Tiffany, do you promise to help Vienna grow in the Christian faith and life? Thank you. And sponsors, Becky and Colin, do you promise to nurture Vienna in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, respond, we do. Thank you. And people of God, do you promise to support this child through the ministries of this congregation and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, say together, we do. And now I ask you all to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. (laughs) Vienna is saying, I say just what they're saying. (laughs) The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, as Vienna is washed in the waters of baptism, that she may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right, we'll hold her nice and close to the water. Vienna Rose Rudar, a little closer down there, like we're a little further down, a little further. (laughs) There you go. Like we're going to, there, perfect. Vienna Rose Rudar. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's for you.
Let us pray. We do give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. You cleanse them from sin and you raise them up to eternal life. Sustain, sustain Vienna Rose with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And now, Vienna, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And now, we'll light the baptismal candle to the Christ candle symbolizing the light of Christ being passed on through the sponsors and parents to Vienna as she grows in her years. Vienna rose, as the Bible says, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. We have a baptismal chest here to give to you that one of our members makes. And... Uh, uh, you can put, uh, well, the baptism certificates are in there now for the sponsors and you guys. And you can put other um, memorable things, important things in there of her church uh, life here and probably of school as well. And this uh, was made by the prayer shawl group, this little baby blanket. And that is for you uh, as well. Love from the congregation. And now let us all welcome Vienna with the words printed in the bulletin. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. If I would be able to take Vienna Rose here. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, you know, I had the joy and privilege last summer to go to Vienna, Austria. And I learned while I was there that some really beautiful things, such as music, came out of that city. And I believe with this newly baptized one, that beautiful music will be coming out of her, too. If not literally, then certainly figuratively, as she lives her life, uh, raised by her parents and, and family and uh, this congregation as well. So I introduce to you the newest member in God's family and Chatfield Lutheran Church, Vienna Rose Rudar. Let's give thanks to the Lord. All right, you all may sit down. You can blow out the candle. I'll put that in the baptismal chest. And let's continue with our prayer of the day, printed on your screen. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us in your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll have special music by our choir, and I want to thank Carmen and Olivia and the rest of the choir for your music this year, as this is the, the last time they'll sing until fall. Maybe we'll do, you know, some pieces in the summer. Who knows? I'm wait, waiting for a soloist or duet to come forward. <laughs>
At this time, we'll sing Jesus Loves Me, and the kids are invited to come forward for the kids' message. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes. Good morning, everybody. Today is Mother's Day, and I thought I would help you all out with a special thing you could give to your mom. So here's what I have. I have some stickers. I'm going to make name tags for you. Does that sound like a pretty great gift for your mom? So then she knows what your name is? Is that good? Do you think your mom needs that? No? Wait, does your mom already know your name? Does she sometimes mix it up and call you your sibling's name? No. No? Okay, I do that sometimes to my kids. But I thought that maybe your mom would need a name tag for you. But she already knows you, doesn't she? So she doesn't need a name tag. Okay, but I've got these name tags, and I've got this pen. I was th- um, maybe I should make a name tag for you for Jesus, so Jesus knows who you are. Does that sound better? Do you think Jesus needs a name tag to know who you are? You think so? I, I wonder. I don't think Jesus needs a name tag for you. Because Jesus already knows you and loves you. We just sang about that, didn't we? Jesus loves me. You know that Jesus loves you because Jesus already knows you and Jesus already loves you. So you don't need a name tag. In our reading today, our gospel reading, we hear Jesus praying for us. For all of his disciples and all of his followers, including us. Jesus knows us and loves us so much that he prays for us. That we can do really well um, in our lives. That we can follow his word. That we can be protected. That we can be united as God's people. Jesus already knows us and loves us. So we don't need a name tag for Jesus. The same way that we don't need a name tag for our moms because our moms already know us and love us and care about us. And we see in our story today how much Jesus loves us and cares about us in his prayer as well. Will you guys say a prayer with me? You can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you you. for knowing us us. and and loving us. Help us to share that love with our moms and our families and the whole world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everybody. You can head on back to your seats. And we will hear the word of the Lord. The first reading from today comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given us about his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts his testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed in the testimony of God which is given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The second reading, would you read responsively? Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers.
That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the assembly of righteousness. The word of the Lord. I invite the congregation to stand for our gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In this passage, we hear Jesus as he prays to God. I have revealed to you those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and my world has and the world has hated them for then they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one for they are not of the world even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be sanctified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to be seated. This passage in John 17 is a peek into Jesus' personal prayer life. And in this particular reading, we get to hear what Jesus prays to God about us, his followers and disciples. Now, I'll be honest, for me, it's a little confusing and hard to follow. It feels more like reading a stream of consciousness. It's not like written Clearly to be understood, it more represents like our prayer lives, the sort of random or circular repetitive fashion that our own thoughts and prayers can take. But despite that, I find some clear messages in this passage, seeing clearly that Jesus prays for us. Particularly, I hear Jesus saying, protect them. Protect us as we continue living in this hostile world. I hear Jesus praying that we may be one as Jesus and God are one. And Jesus prays this for us because division in the world is more normal. And then I hear Jesus praying that they may have my joy made complete in them. Which particularly I notice that it's Jesus' joy to be made complete in us. I have found these same prayers falling from my own lips when I hold my sleeping children. I pray to protect them as they continue living in a challenging world. 
I pray that they may be one with others in community and love. I pray that they may have Jesus' joy made complete in them. I like to think that I pray fervently for my children in the same way that Jesus prayed fervently for us, to live in the world but not live in the world's ways. Today is Mother's Day, and I learned for the first time this year about the origins of Mother's Day in the United States. And it actually has nothing to do with bubble baths or brunch or breakfast in bed or moms getting to take a break. Mother's Day started in this country as a movement that feels like it mirrors Jesus' prayer here. Mother's Day started as a plea from the women of the world to protect their loved ones, for the countries of the world to join together in peace, to let the joy of Jesus reign in the world. Mother's Day began as a radical call to women to band together for peace to stand up against the grand societal expectation that they sit idly by while the men in their lives tramp off to war because of the whims of politicians across the country or the world. Julia Ward Howe wrote the following Mother's Day proclamation in 1870. She says, Arise, all women who have hearts, whether your baptism be that of water or of tears. Say firmly, we will not have questions decided by irrelevant agencies. Our husbands shall not come to us reeking of carnage for caresses and applause. Our sons shall not be taken from us to unlearn all that we have been able to teach them of charity mercy and patience. We women of one country will be too tender to those of another country to allow our sons to be trained to injure theirs. From the bosom of the devastated earth, a voice goes up with our own. It says, disarm, disarm. The sword is not the balance of justice. Blood does not wipe out dishonor, and violence does not indicate possession. As men have often forsaken the plow and the anvil at the summons of war, let women now leave all that may be left of home for a great and earnest day of counsel. Let them meet first as women to bewail and commemorate the dead. Then let them solemnly take counsel with each other as to the means whereby the great human family can live in peace, each learning after his own time the sacred impress not of Caesar, but of God. In the name of womanhood and humanity, I earnestly ask that a general congress of women without limit of nationality may be appointed and held at some place deemed most convenient and at the earliest period consistent with its objects to promote the alliance of the different nationalities, the amicable settlement of international questions, and the great and general interests of peace. This proclamation from Julia Ward Howe is such a powerful call to action for women to stand up against the evils of war that they've experienced firsthand. Women demanding to have a voice in a world that devalued their input. This Mother's Day proclamation feels particularly poignant for me this year as news of violence in Israel and Palestine continues. I will be honest, most of what I know about this conflict actually comes from updates from people that I met last summer in Palestine and Israel. Most of the Palestinians that I met and spent time with last summer were women. 
Women that we sang and danced with, who introduced us to their children, shared their food and culture and traditions, prayed with us and traveled with us. These women are everyday women, realtors, business owners, artists, mothers, sisters, and friends. And these women now huddle in their houses, watching bombs fall from the sky. These mothers now wonder how they will continue to feed their children when tourism, which is their main income, is now non-existent. Women who live in fear of constant violence as they try to go about their daily tasks. So it's the faces of these women that I picture in Julia Ward Howe's Mother's Day proclamation. I picture the faces of Hyam and Mary crying out with Howe's words. Crying out that we will not have great questions decided by irrelevant agencies who are not here day to day. Crying out that our sons shall not be taken from us to unlearn all we taught them of charity and mercy and patience. I hear them crying out that we women of one country will be too tender to the women of another country to allow our sons to be trained to injure theirs. I hear these women crying out, disarm, disarm. The sword is not the balance of justice. And blood does not wipe out dishonor, nor violence indicate possession. In his prayer in John 17, Jesus prayed to God to make us all one. Despite the fact that we live in a very broken world, Jesus recognized that we live in a broken world. And that even in that broken world, we can live separately from it. We can live lives that don't make sense in a world focused on greed and revenge and violence and getting ahead. Julia Ward Howe encourages us to all join as one in her proclamation and her journey towards peace. And Jesus urges and yearns for us to be as one in his prayer. This is central to what our own call to Christian discipleship is. We, too, are in a broken world full of hatred and sin and apathy. And even within this broken world, we can stand up. We can stand apart. We can demand peace. We can love our enemies. We can welcome people who are outside of our circle, and we can live lives of generosity. So today, on Mother's Day, I invite you to pray like Jesus did for the world around you. Pray fervently for protection, not just for the people you know and love, but for the people who are your enemies and the people you do not know. Pray that we might be one in our households, in our church, in our state, in our country, in our world. Pray that we might find Jesus' joy made complete in us. And today, if you celebrate Mother's Day, I invite you to think about Julia Ward Howe and stand up for the sake of peace. Step outside the worldly expectations to work toward peace in every country, every state and city and home and heart. Let us pray. Lord, you show us today the words as Jesus prays fervently for us. And today, let us pray like Jesus, fervent and loving and grounded in you. Make us all one in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is For All the Faithful Women, um, and we're going to sing the verses 1 and 6 and 2.
And it will make sense if you look in the hymnal, like it makes sense why I put them in that order. Um, there's like 12 verses of the song and we're not doing all of them, uh, but we're doing one and then six and then two. It's not a typo, um, it's just the way that it works. So uh, we're gonna sing about um, some of the faithful women in our lives as well as uh, in scripture. Let's sing. There we go. Uh, one of our new member Sundays this, uh, this month. Uh, last week we had a couple of folks join, and today we do as well. So we welcome Dennis and Deb Olick to our church family, and Frank and Tiffany Rudar with their children, Ridley, Riken, and Vienna. So if they would come forward and uh, stand and face the altar, that would be wonderful. Did your sister just get baptized today? I'm gonna, would you like to remember your baptisms? Huh? There you go. <laughs> okay, so face me. We get to put those coins in a little bit. All right. We are so happy to receive you guys into our church family today. And uh, what a blessing that uh, you will be to us as members of our church family. And we pray that uh, your time here will be uh, a blessing to you as well. Together, we do worship the Lord and give our time and talents and treasures for the sake of Christ in the world. Together, we support one another. We hear the gospel. It is a joyous occasion to have you as a part of our church family. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus received you and made you members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word God's loving purpose for you and all of creation. Having already confessed our faith during the baptismal part of our service today, I'll ask you now, do you believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, say, we do. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in your baptisms, to live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of Christ in word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus Christ, and to strive for justice and peace in all of the earth? If so, respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for these new members of our congregation. By your life-giving power, bind us to each other. Strengthen us for your service. Support us all of our days and bring us at length to that day 
when all your children will be one and you will be all in all. Amen. Before you guys go back to your seats, we have uh, some tote bags with Chatfield Lutheran written on it, and I just want to make sure. Ooh, oh, there's some goodies in there too. You'll have to wait, Dennis, for the end of the service for that. And then, oop, not this one. I have to get the one with the bag that has more of the items I was referring to. There you are. And if I could meet you guys after the service for a photo, that would be wonderful. If you want to face your church family, let us welcome them into our congregation. You can go back to your seats. Thank you. I ask the congregation now to stand for the prayers. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's people. Lord God, you sanctify us in your truth. Send your church out into the world to spread your love and joy. Embolden all church leaders everywhere to be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, your creation groans under the strain of pollution. Preserve melting glaciers and dwindling forests. Bolster those who work for climate justice and help us all to be good and faithful stewards of your creation. Bring hope and strength to many in our nation devastated by tornadoes and flooding. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, guide all those who govern and inspire them to work on behalf of the most vulnerable in our midst. Keep safe first responders and those serving in the military and those whose duty it is to protect others. Help world leaders and help nations who are in conflict to seek wisdom and understanding and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, your children need your loving care. Protect them from all harm. Comfort those in any affliction. Support those who grieve and bring solace to those near death. We pray, O oh God, for uh, those who need your healing and strength. Close to home, we lift up to you little Kendall Hamill, Frank, LaVon Hansen, Rick Hansen. We pray for Claire Baum and John Cole, Walt Hanneman, Kayla and Jada and Rachel. And Lord, for all those whose names are upon our hearts, we lift up to you in this time of silence. Grant health and wholeness, peace and joy, strength and hope. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we give you thanks and praise for our mothers and all of the love which, that they share with us and guide us. But in other ways, oh God, we know this day can be very complicated for many. And so we pray for those struggling with parenting or those who feel they have failed, uh, that they would know comfort and peace. For those who want to be parents but cannot, that they would know your love and mercy. For those who grieve the loss of a child, that the depth of God's unending love would breathe peace into their broken hearts. For those who grieve the loss of a dear mother, that you would bring them comfort. For those whose relationship with a mother or father left scars of any kind, that you would bring healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord and our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with each other. You may be seated. We're almost to the offering time, just about. You're going to be a good church member, you know that? Because you're ready with your offering. All right. So I'll let you know. I'll let you know when to drop those coins in. And I hope we can hear them in that noisy offering.
<laughs> a few announcements. Well, first of all, God's blessings to you on this Mother's Day. And uh, the mothers here, would you please stand so that we can honor you with an applause? Please stand, moms. Thank you, thank you. You may be seated. Next Sunday, we'll honor our graduates at the 10 a.m. service. Uh, there's a poster board display out there with many, almost all the pictures of our graduates here from uh, Chatfield Lutheran Church. Um, so the 10 a.m. service will honor them, but at, the ni at 9 o'clock, between services, we'll have a breakfast to honor them as well, uh, hear from them, see a slideshow. Uh, everyone's invited to that. And the free will offering will be used to uh, supply our scholarship fund, and many of them will be receiving scholarships uh, this year. So again, next Sunday between services. Uh, we, ha we will have our men's Bible study uh, tonight at 7 o'clock. Uh, I wondered on Mother's Day if I should bring the men out, but I thought maybe uh, their wives would be kicking them out at that point, or their, or their mothers. So uh, 7 o'clock we'll meet here uh, in the fellowship hall. Uh, there's a youth trip uh, this summer uh, to New Orleans, the National Youth Gathering, and one of the fundraisers that they have will be ending today, and that's the... Uh, um, the Quick Trip Fundraiser. There's a table out there with one of the trip participants will be there. And uh, buy a Quick Trip card and a portion of that goes to their fundraising. So thank you for that. Next week you can pick up those cards. Two weeks from today we go to our summer schedule time. We'll go from two services to one service at 7 a.m. That's going to, no I'm kidding. <laughs> at, at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. two weeks from today uh, throughout the summer. Uh, a couple of announcements that did not get into your bulletin. Vacation Bible School registration is now open. Uh, counselors from Good Earth Village Bible Camp will be here June 17th through the 20th. Now, uh, their how to register, uh, if you go on to the email blast that you received on Friday, you can click into that. You can certainly call the church office um, as well for information on that. Uh, the family service day that Pastor Nissa will be leading, uh, there are many interested in that. Uh, the date chosen is July 12th, and uh, we ask that you register by June 1st. There's more information on that as well in the email blast that was sent to you this past Friday, and you'll be getting all that again this coming Friday uh, as well, so we'll keep you updated on those. Any other announcements that we should mention at this time? Pastor Nissa and I were at Synod Assembly in Mankato yesterday. Uh, no earth-shattering earth shattering news or anything. Uh, the Synod is, is well, and there's uh, much enthusiasm, and uh, all is going well uh, with our uh, church body, the Synod, Southeastern Minnesota Synod, six synods in our state, all part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Well, if there are no other announcements, I invite you to uh, receive the offering today. Thank you.
Let's stand and sing. Let us pray. Lord, we offer our time, our talents, and our treasures for the sake of the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Use them to the blessing and wholeness of this world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And together we pray the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the love of God surround you, the grace of Christ release you, and the Holy Spirit be your guide and strength now and forever. Amen. We sing, Go My Children with My Blessing. My children fed and nourished, joyful and free. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.